Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Berta Warrior here. Hope you are doing well. So happy Monday, happy Monday. So have this ever happened to you? So you probably was on the phone and you were doing a multiple task and all of a sudden when you need your phone, it's like, where is my phone? So I had to go uh, back and uh, retrace my steps, each step I made this morning in order to find my phone. So that's why I am tardy this morning. So forgive my tardiness, my sister, my brother. So nevertheless, let us get started. So, of course, did you take time out to read the word or listen to the word of God? Remember, we must, we must read the word. And we know it's so late on this planet Earth. And the solution is Jesus Christ. And he state, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life and that is John 3 16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you. Thank you, Father God. I thank you that you allow me to find to find my phone. Father God, I give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Father God, right now I ask you that you will decrease me, so Father God, so that you will be increased. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, scripture readings coming from Psalms 9, Psalms Verses chapter 9, verses 1. Psalms chapter 9, verses 1. And it's taken. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth thy marvelous works. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his works. Okay, so let's go into faith and works. And we're going to be doing our belief chapter three we're doing and no no it's chapter four we're doing <clears throat> doing a review of chapter four review 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 so those of you that might be here for the first time what you could do you could either scroll down on facebook and you will see all the lessons there's five lessons here and then or you can go over to youtube on the burdell warrior and um you will find the lessons there as well so here is the opening point the question now to be asked is, are the professed followers of Christ complying with the condition upon which the blessings is pronounced? Are they separating in spirit and practice from the world? How hard to come out and be separate from worldly habits and custom. But let us look well to it that Satan does not allure and deceive us through false representations. Eternal itch interests are involved. Eternal interests are involved. God claims should come first. His requirement, his requirements should receive our first attention. Okay, here is point number one. Every child of fallen Adam must, through the transforming grace of Christ, become obedient to all God's requirement. It didn't say one or nine. It says all of God's requirement. So let's go over to a successful deception. Point number two. One of Satan's most successful deception is to be led is to lead man to claim to be sanctified while at the same time they are living in disobedience to God's commandments. Okay, the condition of eternal life are made so plain in God's word that none need err unless they choose error rather than truth because they unsanctified soul love darkness rather than light. Let's go on, move on over to point number three, point number three. And this is none enter as commandment breakers. None who has had the light of truth will enter the city of God as commandment breakers. His law lies at the foundation of his government in earth and in heaven. Okay. Remember, this is just a quick review, just a quick review. And so here is point number four. Just two classes, two classes, just two classes. Either going to be obedient or you're going to be disobedient. Only two classes. There are to be but two classes upon the earth. 
the obedient children of God and the disobedient. Mm. Do I need to go into any further details? I don't think so. Okay, so let's move on over to point number five. And this is now, if there was ever a time. Mm. Now, if there was ever a time, and you could probably finish that. Now, if there was ever a time for me to get my life in order. Now, if there was ever a time for me to stop eating the things I don't need to eat. Now, is the time uh, for me to stop dressing like the world. Now, is the time, and then you could fill in the blank. Now, is the time for me to be nice to people. Now, is the time for me to be interceding on other people's behalf. Now, is the time. I mean, you could write a whole list of now, now, if there was ever a time, now if there was ever time, it is now for us as believers, as um, ambassadors for Christ to get our lives in order and be the example that God the Father has called us to be. It says, if ever there was a time when we need faith and spiritual enlightenment, it is now. Mm, would you agree? Would you agree? Mm. Some days I can't tell who, so I can't tell male from female or female from male. I don't know. Some days it's, it's very com very complicated. You go into the churches and you can't tell the difference between who is, no, you, can, you can't tell. You can tell the difference between someone that's a Christian or someone that's not. But then it's this deception there as well. It's a deception there. I remember God stated that the wheat and the tear has to, has to be together until he will be the one to do the separation because as a gardener it's like amazing you could look at a weed and you could look at the the herb and they look so alike and if you're not really quite, uh, sure you would destroy both so you know so that's why God is the one that's going to be the, the one to do the separation mm. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? So let us go over. To, I'm going to do the closing now. The closing, the closing. Let me find my closing point. Okay. And it states here. Satan gives his power to those who are aiding him in his deceptions. Therefore, those who claim to have the great power of God can only be discerned by the great detector, the law of Jehovah. The Lord tells us if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. The sheep's clothing seems so real, so genuine, that the wolf can be discerned only as we go to God's great moral standard and there find that they are transgressors of the law of Jehovah. So that concludes my lesson, my review of Ellen White clearly draws the line. And so our next topic will be chapter 5. Chapter 5, and that will be chapter 5. We're going to be on faith and works. That will be our topic for tomorrow. So let me get my water. Hold on. Okay, so we're going to go into my devotion. Devotion, devotion. And the state here. God's grace gives power to overcome. God's grace gives power to overcome. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. And this is coming from Titus 2, verses 1. Titus 2, verses 11. Titus 2, verses 11. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I ask to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to take full control. I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I am watching and waiting for the coming of my Lord. I have not only to wait and watch and pray, but must work more diligently as well. Every action of our lives in our business transactions with our fellow man is to be regulated by the law of God. And we cannot then swerve from the right and justice towards our fellow man under any circumstances, for the Lord will not serve with any man's sin that would injure his neighbor. With our face heavenward, breathing out our petition to God, developing an unselfish love for our fellow man, because we have supreme love for Jesus Christ, whom has brought them with his own blood, we raise supreme 
to the most grievous, subtle temptation. Humble dependency upon God is our surety and our power. My soul wait upon you, God, who is the light of my countenance and my God. And this is coming from uh, Psalms uh, 62 verses 5 and also Psalms 43 verses 5. In every instance, those with whom we associate are to be treated if in humble circumstances with great regards and respect because they have so little to make life happy and because they need help. Souls are too precious to be trifled with. They are God's purchased possessions. Those who are passed by an inferior, the Lord will see set in high places if they trust in him. The grace of God takes men as they are and works as an educator using every principle on which an all-sided education depends. The steady influence of the grace of God trains the souls of the Christ method and every fierce passion, every defect traits of character is worked upon by the molding influence of the Spirit of Christ until new motive power becomes filled with the Spirit of God after the likeness of the divine uh, similitude, similitudes. Never forget that thoughts work out action. Let me repeat that. Never forget that thoughts work out action. Repeating actions form habits and habits form character. Then in giving attention to the little things, there is no fear that the larger things will become stained and corrupt. The Bible is to be the rule of life. Let me repeat that. The Bible is to be the rule of life. It is marvelous in the eyes of the universe of heaven that men who teach the word do not always practice the truth. Few realize that it few realize what it means to be complete in Jesus Christ, the revealed will of God. His word is not dishonored by being brought into practical life to form habits which will develop character. Let me repeat that. His word is not dishonored by being brought into practical life to form habits which will develop character. So that concludes my devotion. God's grace gives power to overcome. Okay? Wow, wow. That's deep. That's deep. So as I, as I was... um. Thinking this morning about the lessons, I thought about Nahum. Remember Nahum? He was um, he was the one of the leader. Actually, he was the, the captain of the king of uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah, uh, Syria. And then you remember the little uh, girl that they had, um, the little girl, and the maiden girl that claimed that was working for um, for his wife. I remember Nah Nahum, he was a leper. He was a leper. But can you believe when he went to Elijah and he was offended because Elijah didn't come out to greet him, right? Did not come out to greet him. And he said, Well, you, you know, and then it, the the servant told him to go and Elijah says to go and dip in the river seven times, okay? And he was so furious, right? So when we think of when I was thinking about him, I'm thinking about how God sends different individuals in other people's life, and sometimes the person might might not have, um, how would you say, might not have the right uh, English. Uh, you say, oh, I can't understand that person, or you might say, oh, look at her, look at the post that he or she posted, and they have uh, typos in there. Or you might oh, open a book, and it's like, oh boy, there's so many typos in there. Or you might, find, I mean, you find. Sometimes we find so many things wrong with the messenger instead of listening to the message. Okay, listen to the message. So think about it. If Nahum, uh, remember he had a, a wise servant, and the wise servant, servant said, well, if he had told you X, Y, Z, you would have done that. So why is it that you are so upset? 
why when he told you to go in the Jordan and you know when he was saying well you know there's all those rivers over where we just came from and we got clear water and all that why would I have to dip in this dirty water right not realizing that's the that's what God gave Elijah to tell you go dip in the water seven times but can you imagine you listen to someone and you you there you know you are so uh think you're so superior or you so well educated and because the person say maybe a couple English words that wasn't correct or whatever right or whatever you think about it and you said well you know what I'm not going to listen to him or her, her because they don't know because their grammar is not this or this was wrong and, and look at how she looks and look at how she dressed or look at how he's presenting and look at his wife look at his children right not realizing that the messenger had prayed a study and the words that are coming out of the messenger mouth is not from the messenger is the god working through the messenger to get you to wake you up hmm. to wake you up and sometimes we as individuals as people we get so high high minded and we forget the message so let's go back to Nahum. so what if he did not listen to his wise servant and he did not dip. But here's the thing. The point was, he had to dip not one time, okay? Not two times, not three times, not four times, not five times, not six times, but seven times. Can you imagine? Seven times. So if you think about your life, has God sent maybe seven messenger or seven uh, different message that you need to be paying attention to? Maybe you might have a struggle with your uh, diet. You might have uh, problems in your relationship with other people. You might have problems in all these different areas. But God has given you specific instructions on what to do. But you refuse. But don't. But take a take that. Nahum listened to his servant and he dipped seven times. Seven times, my sister and brother. And when he got done the seventh time, his skin was like a little child. Okay? So I don't know what God is um, trying to tell you or trying to tell me, but we need to be about our Father's business. And do not mis mistake the... Don't kill the messenger. <laughs> don't throw rocks at the messenger, my sister and brother. Take the message. It might be one word. That can change your life. Just one word that person might have said can change your work, change your life. So do not, how would you say, the messenger is just delivering a message. So it's not the message. So don't be like the children of Israel or uh, the children in in the Bible time when we talk about. I like I like Jeremiah. I like my prophet Jeremiah, and he gave them all these messages, and they gave they said, well, you know, let's call it this Jeremiah. So they took him from out of the dungeon, they brought him over. To, to the kid to the king and he's like and then Elijah said if I tell you are you going to you going to listen to the Lord yes 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 we're going to do whatever God says God. and then he goes and he prays and he comes back and he gives them the message right and they had already made up their mind that they were going to do what they want to do and then of course Eli Jeremiah told them another thing that they did not want to hear right God says to do this. Oh, no, no, no. And they went against God. So do not be like that, my sister, my brother. God is knocking on the door of each one of our hearts. Okay? Each one of our hearts. And it's up to us to open the door. Okay? So don't be like the people of old and continue to kill God's messenger. Okay? God is wake, trying to wake you up, trying to wake you up. You know, we got so many sleeping Christians, or I should say walking dead in the church of the living God. Why is that? Because we are not standing on the promises of God and doing what thus said the Lord. We want to do what we want to do and we are not going to get to heaven. You are not going to get there. I'm not going to go get there by doing my will. We're only going to get there by doing the will of God. So as God the Father continue to knock on our on our hearts, my sister and brother, we as individuals need to open our hearts and allow him to come in. Remember, God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit, they are gentlemen. They do not force their way in. You have to say, Lord, come in. I give you permission to take full control. Take this empty vessels. Fill me up, Father God, with the power that I need to do your will. That is what we are need to be doing, my sister and brother. 
Okay, so so the story of Nahum, I love that story. It's coming from Second King chapter five. Second King chapter five, and you can read the in depth uh, story right there, my sister and brother. So I don't know what it is that you need to do, my sister and brother, but I pray that you surrender your life to the Lord. So here is uh, my hymn. Let's see. Uh, Jesus, a friend of little children. Jesus, friend of little children. Jesus, friend of little children. Be a friend to me. Take my hand and ever keep me close to thee. Teach me how to grow in goodness daily as I grow. Thou hast been a child and surely thou dost know. Step by step, O oh, lead me onward, upward into youth. Wiser, stronger, still becoming in thy truth. Here's the last verse. Never leave me nor forsake me. Ever be my friend. For I, for I need thee from life's dawning to its end. And repeat the, the fourth verse, the last verse. Never leave me nor forsake me, ever be my friend. For I need thee from life's dawning to its end. Mm. Jesus, friend of little children. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God. We ask you, Father, to be our friend, Father God. We ask you, Father God, too, if we have done anything, Father God, that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight today, Father God. We ask you, Father God, as you reign the as you reigning here in Central Valley, we ask you to allow that rain to pour in our hearts, Father God, and wash away anything and everything that is not of you, Father God. And once you have done that, Father God, we ask you, Father God, to fill us up full, my cup, of Lord, fill it up. And let it overpour with the with your spirit, Father God. And we thank you, Father God. We forever give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother. So if we want the Lord to continue to fill our cup, we have to go and take time out, my sister and brother, to read the word, to read the word. And after we read the word, my sister and brother, we got to do what the word said. And we have to meditate on the word of God moment by moment. That is the only, that's the only defense that we have. So as we know, as the last battle of earth history is raging, okay, and it's going to get more intense, okay. So our only safeguard is in the word of God. So if we want the strength, if we want the power, we got to go to the word of God. And God wants to use you. He wants to use me to finish this work that he has called you to do. Because each one of us has a task, has a, a responsibility to do what God has called each one of us. There's someone that God calls you to reap that I cannot reach. Okay. So you, my brother, God has called you to reach someone that somebody else cannot reach. And that person is there for you. So we have to be about our father's business and stop being that dead man walking, okay? Or that dead man sleeping or that dead woman. When I said man, I'm meaning male and female, okay? It's time for us to wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up and sound the trumpet. Sound the trumpet, my sister and brother. Yes, I agree. People are not going to like what you state, say. Because remember, if someone is living in darkness, some people takes a while for the darkness if they allow the Holy Spirit to work. Okay, so all we need to do is give the message. We are supposed to be, uh, as a farmer, you know, planting the seeds, you know, spreading the seeds, spreading the seeds, spreading the seeds. And it's up to the Holy Spirit to reach, to, to reap the harvest. It's not we that reaping the harvest. It's going to be the Lord. So all we can do is uh, pray for one another, point people back to the Lord, and allow the Holy Spirit to take, to do his work. We are not the one that doing work because there's nothing good in, in me. There's nothing good in you. Anything that we do that is good is because of the Lord is doing it through us. 
that's not make sense he is the one that's using us to doing it to her so if i am nice to so and so or i gave so and so a nice compliment or i took the moment to listen to so and so it's not me that's doing it it's just that the person just allowed the holy spirit to take the control okay because it's no good in any of us it's only through the power of god that we are doing good stuff right good stuff so if you would think about everything, everything good comes from the Lord. Everything good comes from the Lord. So let us continue to remain faithful, my sister and brother. So oh, I was saying as the as the as wickedness increased in the land, so is disease in the animal kingdom. So as believers, we need to get away from eating um to 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 stop eating the meat, the flesh the blood, all that stuff. We need to get away from that because what it's doing is 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 uh, compromising your frontal lobe, so you won't be able to make decisions. Right? Remember, God's people are thinking people, and we don't need to have our minds, I would say, um, uh, clogged. Okay. And by eating the diff different things, drinking what we're not supposed to drink, it it, it um it clogs our mind but then also it also perverts our mind and then we look at sin that's why a lot of people these days look at sin and sin is more pleasing to them it's not that they don't know what is right they refuse to listen so as we continue to be in this dark world and it's going to get darker my sister and brother god is calling you he's calling me to be the light to the world to be the light and how can we do that we got to be studying the word of god we have to be studying there's no way around that so my sister and brother thank you guys so much for stopping by thank you so if this was a blessing to you can you do me a favor if you're on facebook hit the like button hit uh, make a comment you can hit the share button then you can follow me over on youtube on the burdell warrior while you're there you could hit uh the subscribe button the bell notification and then whether you're on facebook or youtube you can give me a thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up and i thank you my sister and brother thank you thank you thank you and of course i'm going to ask you for what a hug. i have got a hug from you for for uh, two days right two days two days two days here we go two days here we go one two three thank you my sister Maria. thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today so make sure you say i got a hug today you cannot say you did not get a hug you got a hug today my sister brother so i love you i love you love you love you and i appreciate you and you know what jesus loves you most okay until tomorrow be blessed and take care